The uh, column, the, the team in NFL should change the Redskins' name, not the federal government. Sally Jenkins with another thought-provoking uh, column in the Washington Post. She joins us now. Summarize the column if you can, Sally. Well, uh, I, the main point of the column is that I, it makes me a little nervous when uh, federal government agencies start policing uh, speech. Uh, as distasteful as the Redskins' name is to, uh, I think, most sensible people, I think that uh, there's probably a greater danger from letting the feds police words. What did yesterday mean to the Redskins and any chance of uh, removing this name? Well, it certainly uh, raises the, the amount of pressure on Dan Snyder. Hold on, we'll uh, check Sally's phone there. Now, and, you know, I talked to Rich Eisen about this, and he said, well, if Daniel Snyder doesn't change, does that make him a racist? And I said, no, but he can lack sensitivity. So I think there's a difference there. But this is big business, too. This is big business. Let's uh, bring back Sally. So what did yesterday's ruling mean, Sally? Well, what yesterday really means, I think, is that the, the amount of public pressure and governmental pressure on the red steadily mounting. Uh, there's uh, half of the Senate is unhappy with Dan Snyder. Uh, the president of the United States is unhappy with Dan Snyder. And for the first time, a government agency has actually uh, taken you know, legal action against them. I think there's probably going to be more of that. And that's actually what makes it so uncomfortable. It's one thing for fans to boycott. It's quite another thing for you know, the, the full force of the federal government to come down on business over the use of a word. What is going to be the tipping point in all this? Well, the pocketbook, obviously. I think you and I both know that uh, you know NFL owners really don't do and are absolutely forced to. Well, and, and I don't know Daniel Snyder, but if you were going to summarize his personality and how that impacts any kind of decision here, how would you do that? Well, defiant uh, would be certainly his attitude. I, it's funny. I, I actually think that his sort of excessive provocations on this subject um, didn't help him. You know, when, when he gives an interview to USA Today, he says, I will never change the name, put never in all caps. <laughs> uh, that doesn't make, you know, federal agencies very happy. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that it's been a public relations disaster for the Redskins, among other things. It's been very interesting to sort of watch – them fall into every pothole uh, along the way. What do Redskin fans want? Well, they're very, they're deeply split. Uh, at least judging by my mail, um, <laughs> you know, you, you'd, you'd have to take a pretty, uh, you know, a more scientific poll than that to really understand where the majority and the minority is on the issue. Uh, but, but, you know, I get emails that say, you know, the Redskins are a, a term of honor and a beloved uh, symbol, and I get mail that says it's a vile, racist epithet, and it shouldn't be in the newspaper. Talking to Sally Jenkins, Washington Post columnist, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. That's where I, 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 I kind of chuckle with it when I have people who aren't Native American, but they want to tell the Native Americans how they're supposed to feel about this name. Well, that's been true of American Indians uh, throughout history. I, you know, whether it's the Bureau of Indian Affairs or Teddy Roosevelt or uh, or the rest of us, you know, everyone is always telling Indians what they're supposed to feel and what they're supposed to look like and what they're supposed to act like. Uh, you know, I referenced a wonderful book called The Inconvenient Indian by a novelist named Thomas King and also who's a historian named Thomas King. And that's his main point in The Inconvenient Indian is is that, uh, you know, everyone wants to tell Indians whether they should wear facial hair, uh, what their aspirations should be. You know, we have these stereotypical images of what American Indians should look like and act like, and then we superimpose them on actual living people. Is there any way this could be a win-win proposition where Daniel Snyder could maybe um, be in partnership in unison with a tribe? And, and so we have the Redskins logo, but we change the nickname, but you're also working with Native Americans. Well, you know, he's tried to do that in terms of forming some partnership with American Indians. But, you know, it's worth noting that this thing's been going on for quite a while, and it wasn't until the last year that he actually ever met an American Indian or visited uh, tribal lands. Uh, you know, look, 
if the man had any sense, uh, he would change the name voluntarily to something like Warriors, and Sports Illustrated would name him Sportsman of the Year, and he would be feted and celebrated <laughs> and get everything he wants in the way of public opinion. No, I don't know about Sportsman of the Year, Sally. Uh, maybe not. It's probably, <laughs> it's probably gone past that point, hasn't it? Yeah, but the yeah. commissioner doesn't want to get involved. And now the, his sort of neutrality here, does that bother you? Well, oddly, I think the NFL is, the league is more involved than they're letting on because they actually have a stake in the trademark. Uh, now, they can say that they don't own this specific trademark, but, but look, you know, the licensing is split 31 different different ways. Um, you know, they certainly have a stick in the issue, and they're certainly, you know, pulling wires behind the scenes. Um, and so to say that the NFL is neutral on this issue is really nonsense. Goodell's being disingenuous. Yeah, but he's backed away. I mean, you, you, you can't get him close to it. Uh, and you want to let your owners be owners. You don't want to go in as Big Brother or be Orwellian here. So that's why I think it's – we're seeing well, this – yeah, I think there's that. You know, he, he doesn't want to pick fights with his own uh, owner constituency, uh, number one. But I also think as big a factor as anything is the fact that he doesn't like being associated with failures or with – I don't think Roger Goodell likes being associated with uh, controversy and hot-button issues, particularly not ones in Washington, D.C. <laughs> if I said five years from now, what will the uh, name of the Washington football team be? Or... I think it will – believe it or not, I think it will still be uh, Redskins. I, you know, I, I, I am not at all convinced that this trademark uh, issue is going to be the tipping point that, um, no. you know, some publications are making it out to be. What, uh, what do you make of this? And I fall in, you know, with this, that you get sort of the low-hanging fruit. Now everybody's coming in to pile on with this and say, now how can they, how can they do this and have a name like that, the Redskins, and this is insensitive and not fair to Native Americans. What, if it was, wh Where has everybody been on it, I guess, is uh, what I want to ask, Sal. Well, I mean, this case has been going on since the 1960s. There have been protests about the name uh, since the 1960s. Uh, the case has been in and out of the, the trademark and patent office, uh, you know, um, since that time. Uh, there was a decision in 99. There was an appeal. Uh, you know, one of the big questions here, it's interesting watching the federal government work. I'm not quite sure why it took 10 years to resolve this. Do you realize this case has been before the trademark and patent office wow. for a decade. Wow. Uh, you know, talk about the glacial pace of government. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, it's not like it just came along. What's happened is it's reached a critical mass in public opinion uh, and in the newspapers and on television. So the media has kept it uh, before the public and social media has kept it before the public uh, at a new, all new level. But it's been there all along. Thank you, Sally. Keep fighting a good fight. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank uh, you. All right, Sally Jenkins, Washington Post.